In this session, we are going to discuss full wave rectifier. Rectification, as you know, is the process of converting an AC into DC. This is a center tap rectification circuit. This is a step down transformer which tran step down to 30 volt into a lower voltage. In our case, it is going to be a 6 volt step down transformer. 230 will be stepped down to 6 volts. Then we have two diodes, D1 and D2, and a capacitor and a load resistance RL. This is a center tap of the transformer. So this is a transformer. This is the primary input to the transformer. These are the three outputs. First output, second output and the center tap. Center is a center tap. So there will be, this is 230 volt to 6 volt, 606. You will get 6 volt between this point and this point. You will get 6 volt between this point and this point. So if you take these two points, you will get 12 volts. Now we want the center tap coming to this end. These are the three wires, 6, 0, 6. This ash colored wire is the center tap of this transformer coil. So we will be taking connections from these three points. This being the center tap. So once again coming to the circuit, primary of the transformer, these are the three output wires of the transformer, this being the center tap. So capacitor and resistance, load resistance are connected between this point and the center tap. While two diodes are connected to the extreme two ends of the secondary coil of the transformer. Here the role of capacitor is to act as a filter. You know, even though the diode does rectification, there will be some component of AC in the output. We will be measuring our output across the load. That is, we will connect either a voltmeter or better to have a multimeter here with which you can measure the AC voltage as well as the DC voltage for a given load resistance. So, you will see what is the AC output voltage and DC output voltage when there is this capacitor which is acting as a filter to filter out the AC component. Then we will repeat the same experiment by removing after removing this capacitor and see what is the AC component and DC component across the load when there is no capacitor connected in the circuit. Then we will evaluate or calculate the ripple factor which is defined as AC component to DC component. Now we will do the circuit. These are the three wires that are coming from the secondary of the transformer. The two extreme connections, this being the center tap. So let us do the connection. The extreme connections, I am planning it over here. The center tap, I will use this point. As you know, this is a linear point. This is a single point. Now we'll do the rest connections. Taking the diode. If you want, you can have the reference of the circuit here. Once again, have the look of the circuit. So diode, positive and negative. I have identified there's a silver ring at the negative end. So connecting it here to another point. Then taking the next diode. This end being the negative. So to this point, I'm connecting the diode. And as you can see in the circuit, these two negatives of the diode should be connected by a single wire. 
Yeah, that is both the negatives have a common connection point. So using jumper wires, I'm doing that. I've connected both the negatives of the diode using a single wire. Now I want to connect a capacitor from this point and a resistance from this point. So let me use this wire. Here I would like to, this is my orange wire. I'm extending this point to this point, that is this point to here where I would like to connect my capacitor. Capacitor, positive of the capacitor here and negative to this common negative of the capacitor as in the circuit to this center tap base point. Now I would like to connect this resistance, extend this point with the help of a wire. So taking one more connection from that same point and keeping it somewhere here so that I can use it as a point for the resistor. So it is I'm connecting a resistor here. I have connected 20, 22K. Okay, I've connected 20, 22K over here, a resistor. And this end should come to the center tap point. As you can see in the circuit, resistance and end should be in the common center tap point. So this is my common center tap point. Here the capacitor and resistor connection has come. So the circuit is done. From the transformer, I've taken three connections, one extreme. This is the center tap, this is the other extreme. Two diodes connected to the two ends of the transformer secondary. Two diodes connected in this manner, having a common point. Then this is extended, this point is extended to this point and the capacitor is connected. This point is extended to this point and another resistor is connected. Both is having connection with the center tap. So the circuit is done. Now we will switch on the circuit. Now the circuit is switched on. I have to measure the AC and DC voltage across this resistance. When this capacitor or filter is placed there with this filter, I will have to measure AC and DC voltage here using a multimeter. So that is what I'm going to do. This is a multimeter. I have put this knob in AC voltage, 200 volt. I'm going to measure what is the output across this resistor. So you can see it is 16.3 volt AC voltage. Across this resistor, I'm measuring it, 16.3 volt. Now I would like to measure the DC voltage across the same resistor and it comes to 7.8 volt. Hope you can see the meter. It comes to 7.7 .7 or 7.8 volt. So with this resistor, I have measured AC and DC voltage. Now I'll switch off the circuit and remove this resistor and replace it with another resistor say 15 I'll start with ohms 220 ohms I'll take the measurement of AC and DC voltage then lower resistance of 22 ohms then 2.2 kilo ohms 4.7 kilo ohms 15 kilo ohms or any other resistance that you have in a hand or it is always better to connect a rheostat over here so that you can vary the resistance and measure it. What is the value? That is also possible. Connect a rheostat at these points instead of a resistor and measure the rheostat. Or resistance box is the best. If you have a resistance box, you can see what is the resistance over there. So connect a resistance box across this point and change the resistance and measure the AC and DC voltage across the resistance vol resistance box for each value of resistor. So this is a measurement of the circuit with the capacitor C acting as a filter. 
now this experiment has to be repeated as a second part without the filter so you just remove the filter capacitor connect your resistance or resistance box here whatever is resistance box is ideal one and repeat this experiment for ac and dc so i'm putting it in ac first measuring the ac value then putting it in dc and measuring the dc voltage so this ac by dc this is a dc value it comes to 2.3 in the multimeter 2.3 It's varying a bit so AC and DC measurements have to be done without this capacitor so finally your tabular column is going to be like this that is with various values of load measure the output DC voltage and AC voltage across the resistor and calculate the ripple factor as VAC by VDC. This you can do with the filter, 100 microfarad I have used. And without the filter, you do the same part. Measure the load and AC and DC voltage for that particular load. So repeat for various loads and calculate the ripple factor. You can change the capacitor value from 100 microfarad to 10 microfarad and do the experiment again. So that would be another repetition. You can see that without filter, the ripple factor is going to be around 0.5 for the center tap bridge rectifier. And you can see that with filter, the ripple factor goes on decreasing when the load increases. Thank you.